and welcome to this episode of Faith and Community. I'm your host, Kate seitz the Associate Minister at the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of York. As you know, our regular viewers, this is a show that features organizations, faith communities, and congregations in our area, and the work that they do to build a stronger, healthier neighborhood in our viewing area. I have a special guest today, my old friend, Melissa Plotkin, who is the Director of Diversity and Organizational Development at the Jewish Community Center. Thank you for having me, Kate. Well, thanks for coming on. I, there are so many exciting things that happen at the Jewish Community Center. Mm -hmm. And I know so many people who think either it is an organization for and by the Jewish community exclusively, or it's just a really great gym. Mm -hmm. um, and lots of people belong to the gym, but I know that it does so much more in our community. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate your coming to help tell the Thank story. You. Yes. And we are much more than just a gym, uh, more than just a lot of times people will know us, especially if they have smaller children, child care. We're, we're an excellent facility for uh, child care. And we're actually building on to accommodate more children and take more children off our waiting list and expanding our fitness center so more people can be, become more fit and um, really to provide more wellness programs as well. But um, we are, we're more than just childcare and fitness. And a lot of JCCs actually across the United States look to our JCC because we are in an area where there aren't a lot of Jewish families. So, and, and we're prospering. We're doing very well for ourselves. Um, but we're, we're growing and still, as we add on, as we build, we're gonna need to fill those spaces with members. So um, we're very excited. And the Jewish community here, although it's very small, maybe 200 active families in the Jewish community. Um, again, we still open our doors up to everyone. My children love to drive by and, and read the the banner out front, everyone's welcome at the JCC. Mm -hmm. So that's really a very important tagline for us. Yes. Um, I recently learned um, something that I didn't know at all, and that is that our York JCC is really quite unique in the country mm -hmm. for several reasons. First of all, how when was the JCC founded here in York? Do you know that? I'm not sure the exact year. I want to say... I kind of pulled that out of thin air. Yeah, that you when, did. <laughs> yeah, I just, because I know the Jewish community has a very long history here mm -hmm. in New York. Um, so there have always been, uh, there has always been a, a, an active and involved Jewish community, but yes. it is small. Yes. Um, <clears throat> We've been in our, in our current location for 25 years. Mm -hmm. So prior to that, we were downtown in downtown New York. So uh, we've, yes, we've been around for a very long time. Yeah. Um, so, tell me about your role at the JCC. Well, my role um, at the JCC, and, and I know you mentioned we have um, some notoriety to ourselves. I am um, a department of one. I'm a diversity department, and we're the only JCC in the United States that has a diversity department, um, which, again, makes us stand out, but it's something that is extremely important to our board, um, and I think it's something that sets us apart in the community as well, not only our community, but in the JCC's community, JCC's across the United States and their community. Um, it's an important part of what we do. As the diversity director, um, I'm really charged with many things. One is to let companies and organizations, businesses know about uh, our diversity department and what all we can offer. Um, and that includes many a thing. Um, we provide bias awareness trainings, which in today's day and age, bias awareness is so very important mm -hmm. um, in every community. It doesn't matter whether you're urban, rural, it's all important to all of us. And talking to individuals, doing activities and interacting with them, it's interesting because everyone is on a journey in terms of understanding biases and your own biases and kind of taking a step back and then another step back and helping people understand why is it the way I think I think and why do I say 
this versus that. Mm -hmm. um, and understanding our frames, sorry, <laughs> and how we see the world and what helped us form those frames. And also understanding that prejudice is learned and it can be unlearned. So it's um, those trainings and those opportunities are really for anyone, whether it's children, um, in schools, preschool, you know, even, I, although I've never done one in a preschool, it would be interesting to, um, to do something with uh, small children. I would. Um, <laughs> but we also do them in high schools, businesses, companies, organizations. Um, and I like seeing the light bulbs go off in people's heads mm. um, when I'm doing those programs because it's, um, it's one of those things where you're like, those unconscious bias mm -hmm. that you have, um, or even just helping people see how um, there's privilege in some communities, in white communities versus others, and how right. that privilege pays off for some and not for others. Mm -hmm. So that's a big part of what we do uh, with, with the diversity department. Um, we also have a wonderful relationship in uh, collaboration with Leadership York, where we do leadership for diverse schools. Mm. And that came out of a conversation and out of work um, prior, to, obviously prior to me coming on, Randy Friedman, who is our executive director, was around um, and was our diversity director at one time. So um, helped form that relationship, understanding that, and not necessarily understanding, but helping teachers and administrators who work with students be able to not only recognize their own biases, not only being able to understand how diversity is not just something you see, mm. that it's so much more than that, scratching the surface. So um, working with them and training with them year round. So we're coming up to our most recent class, which will start in a couple of weeks, and we'll start off with an orientation. And then we have an overnight retreat with them. This year's group is about 28 teachers. This is leadership? Leadership for diverse schools. Which, oh, okay. So <clears throat> I was still back at leadership your. Okay, well they're part of it because they bring the leadership qualities to the table. So mm. we're not only providing diversity piece, but a leadership component mm. to each session. So we'll do our retreat where we'll do a lot of, not necessarily cleaning house, but really, um, kind of surveying ourselves, mm -hmm. taking into account, looking at our frames. Like an internal audit. Yes, an internal audit and really, and providing the, the foundation of understanding leadership qualities and how we all possess different leadership qualities. Mm -hmm. So that will lead into our monthly meetings where we'll bring in speakers from all over the community um, to talk about different types, different pieces of diversity. So whether it's racial diversity, and we're talking more specifically about the African American community, about the Latino and Hispanic community, we also um, provide information and activities that can help them in the classroom. So when they're working with any of these pieces of diversity, so like socioeconomic status, mm -hmm. Um, working with students who may not have as much as other students. Um, one of the other topics is working with students who may identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or questioning. We also provide an evening of training that works, talking about working with students who have learning abilities and exceptionalities, mm -hmm. disabilities, and again, activities, tips, things that can help them in the classroom so that they are not struggling. And so again, they're also you know, using that internal audit to understand, okay, well, I'm working with this student and they weren't raised the same way I was raised. They weren't um, provided with the same items that I was. They don't live in a two-story colonial on an acre of land. Right. Um, so understanding all of that um, I think is very, very important. You just used a phrase that um, it reminded me of 
even how important language is. Mm -hmm. We get into habits of language and there are trends, uh, phrases and words <clears throat> that go in and out of fashion. Um, we, people of my generation, remember the day when um, it, people of different ethnic and racial backgrounds were called by one name and then that word uh, became really pejorative and not accepted socially mm -hmm. and the language changes you just said working with recognizing that people have different learning abilities and exceptionalities those are that's a phrase that's new to me okay. but i understand exactly how that phrase can be much broader and more accurate than saying you know my nephew has a learning disability mm -hmm. well that's a that's a particularly n narrow and almost negative way of indicating that someone is unique in their mm -hmm. learning style. Mm -hmm. So even recognizing language and finding better ways to communicate um, ideas or even about identity is something that is more talked about, more intentional than it used to be. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a very small town in uh, southern York County. And I remember even as a child, I started school when I was five in a two-room schoolhouse. So the first half of the last century, a really long time ago. <laughs> but the only window to diversity, and I didn't even know that word, that I had was the National Geographic magazine. Okay. Other worlds, the world was so big. And I... I learned that early on because I had that window. And very early on, I recognized that the community I grew up in didn't have, wasn't that wide, mm -hmm. wasn't that different. Mm -hmm. We were all related and we all looked alike, mm -hmm. essentially. Mm -hmm. So to go to school and then ultimately to get out of that town and eventually to come to York where, oh, there I saw more of the world mm -hmm. was very exciting to me. Mm -hmm. But I felt completely without tools to access those other worlds and other people. Mm -hmm. Not everyone is as curious or has that opportunity. And some people don't want that opportunity. Mm -hmm. But in my lifetime, I've seen things change so much just in, our, in, in the York area. Mm -hmm. um, and York City has a much greater diversity mm -hmm. of population than even, you know, eight miles in either direction. Mm -hmm. So I can see why the Jewish Community Center um, really saw an important niche mm -hmm. for helping people um, uh, gain the tools mm -hmm. to access the wider world, which is the way I look at it. Right. Yeah. And I've seen your program grow at the JCC mm -hmm. over these years, too. Um, it started out with classes in public schools, and now um, this whole area of diversity. I'm a little, I'm a little um, uh, amazed that you are a department of one <laughs> uh, doing all this work. It's like well, and it, it, it's not everything's not happening all at once, but these are really opportunities for companies, businesses who are making a priority of not only who they serve, um, also how the community sees them, mm -hmm. how the people that they serve see them, or even their employees, what the culture is like in their business or in their building. Are we, you know, are we saying that we stand for X, Y, and Z? So if we say that, do people really think that? Is that what they see when they look at us? Right. Or meet um, us? When I, you know, when I think of and I'm, I think of a local business, and I won't say the name, <laughs> but when I think of strong connection to the community, and I see it on a billboard, but I also see it otherwise. I see the president out making you know, a notice that we're gonna be doing this, this, and this, and um, noting that their staff members are encouraged, if not you know, nudged, to, to volunteer in the community. Mm. And they're allowed to do that on work time. Wow. So that, to me, as an outsider, and I'm not even a member of that organization, I can see that those pieces shows me that 
they are an organization that is connected to the community. And I'm sh sure there is so much more that I don't see. So coming in for a culture or a culture assessment, a climate assessment, or a building audit uh, would be able to kind of give you a, a world's eye view or a bird's eye view of um, what that looks like. Well, I'm reminded of the analogy that um, a, a fish can't describe water. <laughs> So, and, and I'm I've never heard that before. Yeah, I mean, a, a fish can't describe water because they're in it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know my blind spots because I'm blind to them. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of internal audit you talked about works at the personal level, but I'm very aware of this congregationally. Mm -hmm. um, churches uh, in this day and age across the board of any denomination or faith tradition are recognizing their relevance and connection to community is changing. It's not, we aren't the centers for education and social life that we used to be. There are many other choices that people have for making connection. And everything's about personal relationship. Mm -hmm. So that if you don't know the people that you want to be in relationship with, how do you um, make yourself accessible? Mm -hmm. Now, when I worked for the city, I did building audits too but it was about nuts and bolts and locks and physical security. Mm -hmm. So explain a little bit what a building audit, for example, might involve in a, a church building. Okay, in a church building. Well, I would probably say that it would start while I'm still in a car driving up to the church. Um, what What is the signage? Is there signage? Do I know where I'm going if I Okay, if it says South George Street, where is it? Oh, there's the sign. Okay, so I turn in. Um, how consistent are all the signs? You know, and I guess a lot of time, um, the audit itself um, is what the organization wants to get out of it. So they would have to tell me, this is what we're looking for. Um, you know, is the signage consistent? Um, is it welcoming? So one of the things I will look for is, you know, are there any welcome signs? Or if I'm new, if I'm just person off the street coming up, um, where do I go? Is there a sign that tells me where to go? Um, so if I go in the building, where do I go then? Um, again, signage, directions. Um, if I am not from that area or from even that country, from this country mm. coming up, you know, if I don't speak the language, or if I speak just a little bit of English, will I be able to read the signs? Um, if you're looking to entice people from other cultures, photographs, pictures. We want, people want to be, I think a lot of times where they feel like they fit in. So if I see people and pictures that don't represent my life, my culture, I may not be as strongly committed to staying right. there. So I would look for things like that. Anything that's hanging up, um, anything in the building that um, somebody may obviously look at and think, is this welcoming? Is this inviting? Is this diverse? Um, could I see myself here? Mm -hmm. For example, if I were the single mother of very small children and I didn't see a playground, a picture of anybody under 50 mm -hmm. um, or or classrooms with, with little furniture, mm -hmm. I would just assume that this is not a place um, for me. Not right. that people wouldn't love to have me, but who are my kids going to play with? Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Um, I'm. So that would be a building audit. Mm -hmm. You're sort of looking at... Um, the physical plant. Mm -hmm. What's a culture audit? A culture is more so, well, just that. It's it's a, an assessment of the culture. So what is it like to work here? What is it like to be a member here? You know, the this church states that their values, that their beliefs, that X, Y, and Z. So it's a lot of times it may be interviews, it may be surveys, um, something that a staff member or a member per se would have a series of questions to answer mm -hmm. and really kind of get into their head in terms of, well, 
does, you know, congregation XYZ, you know, if they say that they believe in ADP or, sorry, I'm throwing all these letters out. If they <laughs> believe, soup. well, if they have a strong belief in diversity, mm -hmm. Is that, is that something that I see? Is that something that I hear? Is mm -hmm. that something that brings me to this congregation every week? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's really kind of assessing a lot of times what you can't see. I mean, what culture has been created right. by the, the leadership there or by the staff there? And just from the work that, that I know that I've done in community and also in the congregation, uh, one of the first responses used to be, well, I don't know any people like that. I don't have any work to do on this. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is that um, that kind of relevance begins with self-awareness. Mm -hmm. um, so that is the work that we all have to do. Mm -hmm. um, and it, without self-awareness, everything else is just a coat you put on and take off mm -hmm. when it's convenient. That is not, um, that's not being open and truly welcoming. Um, I also learned that, I mean, I, I had to work with all kinds of people when I worked for the city, and I thought the first thing I had to do was learn Spanish. So I wanted as much as possible to surround myself with people who could help me learn Spanish. Mm -hmm. And I realized pretty quickly that the least of the ways we connect very often is with words. Mm -hmm. um, it was all about relationship and presence, not mm -hmm. so much that I had to learn the language, it was more important that I show up and be there mm -hmm. and listen. Um, and, um, that, and that was the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then everything else followed. One of the things I did this summer was work with our summer campers. So uh, students who are entering first grade uh, up through fifth grade, and I work with them once a week. And the first week we talked about language. We talked um, specifically about learning how to say hello in different languages. Mm. So we did it in sign language. We learned, um, we showed vid I showed videos in terms of just from different countries, different, even understanding that in one country you could have upwards of 600 languages spoken. Yeah. And that was like, Wow, they were. It was. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. But one of the things I, you know, one of the questions I posed to the students was, so if somebody new came to your school and they didn't speak English or they spoke very little English, what's something that you could do to make them feel welcome? And one of the students, without missing a beat, raised her hand and said, "You could learn how to say." or you could learn how to speak their language. I said, exactly. And I said, that's very hard, but understanding, even just willing, being willing to say, you know, how do I say hello? Oh, how do you say chicken? One word, yeah. Yeah, you know, that says to them, mm -hmm. they're thinking about me, mm -hmm. they're thinking about my needs, they care about me, and they care about fitting in, or helping me, you know, assimilate, or helping me fit in with, their their community right so right. it's not so much you're not from york county but it's more so hey let's learn more about you and right. you know making that a, a learning point for them while mm -hmm. they're in school so so uh what are the youngest what are your youngest uh clients oh my um well the, the summer the summer camp obviously the students were as young as first students entering first grade oh, wow. which was great um, because most of the time I had the same lesson I had to tweak it just a little bit but for me it was um, it was so gratifying talking about heroes and talking about people like Harriet Tubman and um, Elizabeth Cady Stanton and talking about um, freedom and the the movement away from slavery and women's right to vote and talking about equality and I get chills just thinking about it but having them you know seeing them say and hearing them say well that's not right well that's just not right and looking to their friends in mm -hmm. that maybe in that particular group who were like that was that could have been you, and that's not right. Yeah, that and, sense of justice at, mm -hmm. at even six years of age. Yes. 
Yes. Um, now the youngest, I mean, certainly um, providing, um, although I've not provided the lessons per se with children younger than that, we can certainly um, put something together. Mm -hmm. um, all of our school-based programs, whether it's in class or assemblies, um, are really tailored to the needs of that school. So um, a lot of people still am, are implementing the Green Circle, which is a program that we brought to York County. Um, and I'm, we still have people who come up to me and say, I, was, I used to do the Green Circle in my school. Um, and that sense of community and sense of um, equality that Green Circle brings, you know, empathy and respect um, is so vital. So a lot of the virtues and a lot of the values that come with the Green Circle are certainly implemented with any type of program that we would do. Say a little more about the Green Circle. I remember, I remember the phrase, but I've, I, I've forgotten. Mm -hmm. um, we don't really, uh, we don't, we don't personally teach it any longer, oh, although it's taught. It was an early program that right. you used. Um, but there are people in other school districts who will come up to me at present time and say, we still teach this at our elementary school. Oh, oh so it's that sense of understanding our circles and who are those people in the circles, um, but understanding that we are one part of a community. So it's not just, um, this isn't just my world, it's everyone's world and understanding that we treat each other equally mm -hmm. in their friendship respect. I mean, all of those are very important. Core virtues. values. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That we all want to implement in our community, right. no matter who we are. Um, <clears throat> so I hear you saying that most of what you do is going to people mm -hmm. who want to benefit from this kind of wisdom and, and service. Mm -hmm. um, you do classes, you do very concrete assessments for mm -hmm. buildings and organizations. And you've talked about schools and businesses, but my guess is that you would do the same thing for a faith community or a church yes. who mm -hmm. Uh, is trying to f answer the question, how can we connect with our immediate neighborhood and be more relevant? Right. Um, because our neighborhoods are changing around us so mm -hmm. quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I've seen York change over the years. Um, the, the degree of um, richness that we have in mm -hmm. cultures and languages and people is, is very exciting. But it, we, even as small a community as we are, um, five square miles in the city. Uh, it takes effort. Y you've got to be willing to walk out to your doorstep, go to your next door neighbor, knock on the door and say, welcome to the neighborhood. Tell me about mm -hmm. who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we're not willing to do that, um, much, much of this learning doesn't happen. Right. And I think, um, you know, there are organizations that like the JCC are trying to do that. You know, we are trying to reach out to individuals in the Jewish community, um, you know, in terms of helping them understand that, you know, we are not just a Jewish community center, but we do provide culturally, mm -hmm. uh, cultural programs that relate to the Jewish faith. But they also, I think, also relate to other faiths as well. So, you know, there's that piece of it, but, um, Understanding, you know, getting to know people, which takes time. Mm -hmm. It really, I, one of the things that I've discovered in, in working with students is that five minutes, there's an, a, an activity that I do with students and it actually involves a little math. And not, not that you have to add or subtract anything, <laughs> but it involves some math tools. But really, five minutes you know, oh, I'm from this place, or, you know, even funny little things that, um, one of the questions I asked students to talk about with just one other person was, well, have you ever, hmm, have you ever broken a bone? Well, yeah, me too, really? And we don't see that. Do you have any siblings? Do you have a pet? Um, what's your favorite thing to eat for dessert? Or, What's your favorite meal for lunch? Um, we both have the same kind of same colored hair and we both wear glasses. Um, you know, simple things. Have you ever had Scrapple? And some people, what? <laughs> what? Or do you eat ketchup on your eggs? You know, 
not that you would necessarily say that to somebody that you don't know, but even just taking that five minutes of time to get mm -hmm. to know somebody <clears throat> or just to, hey, welcome to the community. If you need anything, I'm two doors down or, yes. um, you know, if you need someone to get your child off the bus, um, you know, let me know. I can show you where the bus stop is. Absolutely. You know, I, part of that exercise you were describing is helping people develop a, um, a habit and a skill of knowing what questions to ask. Mm -hmm. um, I know I went, <clears throat> this happened years ago, I, I visited my sister who lives out west, a completely different state, you mm -hmm. know, Rocky Mountains, far away, and um, I, for the first time I was there, and so she was taking me around to all of her friends and introducing me. Mm -hmm. And after about the fourth person, she took me aside and she said, stop asking people what they do. No one cares how we pay our bills out here. What we care about is, where did you hike today? What are you training for? Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize I was doing that, but it becomes a habit of mm -hmm. our culture the way we communicate around here, what do you do when we really want to know wh what's your job? Mm -hmm. And for her to say, no one cares how we pay our bills, made me hear that question a completely different way. Mm -hmm. And I determined that I would never again make that the first question I asked mm -hmm. somebody when I meet them. Mm -hmm. um, but then, okay, so what, what do you ask, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I think it's it's just important to recognize sometimes how much of what we do of our culture is really habit mm -hmm. that can be drawing a line that indicates I'm in and you're out. It's a great, great way to look at it. And perspective, language and perspective, and even what you just said, I, I never thought about it that way. Yeah. Well, when I, I lived in... in Lancaster County um, as a young adult and <clears throat> worked in the Mennonite community. And one of the first questions people in that community asked each other, especially children coming to school, um, what church do you go to? Mm. And it didn't, it wasn't so much the church, they all knew they were Mennonite, but it was really who are your people? Because the congregations were very often named with the town or the family group that had founded it. And I realized how community oriented they were. Mm -hmm. Who are your people? And so that took me back to my own childhood in York County. And we would ask the same kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. We wanted to know who are your people? Mm -hmm. How are we connected? Mm -hmm. And, and it, it comes back to relationship and wanting to know who you are, where you fit in, mm -hmm. and whether or not I have a place in that green circle. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. And even understanding that although we may not have a lot in common, that's okay. Oh, and yeah, yeah I, I mean, I had a friend years ago ask me, um, it, was a, it was a political issue and they said, I said, yeah, my neighbor and I have opposing views on that. You have friends who you know, or don't think the same way you do about that, which was, I could tell for her asking the, or making that statement that that was, that was a qualifier for her. And for me, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. I don't agree. I don't, I have friends who I get, I, yep, we're in line on this. We're in line on that. We're definitely not in line on that. And, but understanding that it's okay mm -hmm. to be, to have people who think differently, who dress differently, you know, from different cultures, who may not, who may have a different accent than you do. Yeah. So, um, which always gets me because when um, you come from your county, there's always a question of, well, are you from your county? Or are you from outside of your, I know. oh, did you move in here from where? <laughs> and how long ago? Yes. Yeah, they say you've got to live here for, you know, if you're not here for more than three generations, you're still not a local, mm -hmm. which is, well, and that's one of the active one of the things we do with leadership for diverse schools is with the teachers, helping them. We separate them out by who's from your county, and who's not, and that the activity that I do with them is actually something that they can take into their own classrooms, and 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 do with their students. So, you know, if they're 
there's always a there's always um, a comment or well you know a statement well we have X amount of students who are not from this school district they've moved in from Baltimore that's usually the first place uh, or they've moved in from somewhere else and um, they're outsiders in a lot of cases mm. but coming from from your county it's one of those things where I'm like well that doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be an insider versus outsider right. um, if anything it's like oh well you're gonna hear people talk about um, dippy eggs or you're gonna hear about the York Fair and what that is and um, for me it's fun mm -hmm. because it's like oh well, I get to teach somebody else about what what's going on around here so and for me talking with someone who's who's from outside the area or a completely different culture helps me see my area with new eyes mm -hmm. with fresh eyes and it is exciting mm -hmm. the other the other piece of it is um, we're a storytelling people yes I, we really are uh, whether we think of it that way or not storytelling and meaning telling and if we were all the same we wouldn't have stories to tell each other mm -hmm. so the more different we are even if it's in our opinions um, the richer our stories are and mm -hmm. and it's the way we learn about our world and right. and I think make our our community stronger ultimately mm -hmm. um, but it it's got to start with that open relationship and being willing to say I have no idea what that means or tell me tell me who you are mm -hmm. how do you identify yourself mm -hmm. which is another question that um, may not pop to mind right away but we make so many assumptions about what we see on the outside that more and more I think we're learning you can't judge a book by its cover. No. And exactly what you said, I mean in terms of stories, um, stories have a way to penetrate someone and really change someone's opinion and change someone's frame, even changing their frame in terms of how they think about a certain group of people. Um, or that person in particular. And yeah, scratching the surface, even just a little bit, you have one of those, what we call aha moments. Okay, mental note, you know, not to yeah. do that. And um, there's an activity that we do in, a per, in trainings and it's called First Thoughts. And you know, it's about tackling what's inside here and that first immediate thought, as soon as you see something, what do you think of? Mm -hmm. And understanding what, not only why we think that, but if it's negative, how can we change that? So. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for the work that you do. Oh, thank it's, you. I can tell that you're me. passionate about it. I am. You're, you're good at it, and mm -hmm. we're so fortunate to have you in the position and to have the Jewish Community Center. Um, it's not just about um, the Jewish community. No. It's about all of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, tell us the website. The website is www.yorkjcc.org. And what else do you want our viewers to know about the Jewish Community Center? Oh my! Like you said at the beginning, we are more than just um, we're more than just a fitness center. We um, we look at the the whole person in terms of wellness, um, understanding. There's so much information out there, but helping um, our members understand that it's more, you know, health doesn't mean a number. You don't get on the scare and that doesn't tell you how healthy you are. Mm -hmm. Understanding your body, you know, body fat, understanding what's going on inside um, and helping people make that transition into a healthier lifestyle versus I'm going to go on a diet. It's more of a healthier lifestyle. The other, you know, the other piece of it is our children and mm -hmm. how much they are so much a part of what we do at the JCC. So it's diversity working with childcare and even getting them involved in fitness, um, having fitness programs, having art programs there for them mm -hmm. um, is great. And so much happens to a child before they turn the age of five in exactly. terms of their development, in terms of their learning. So having that having that captive audience having those students there um, and being able to have highly qualified and trained staff to help those children and help those families 
um, no matter what those families look like, um, you know, make that progression through life and have them ready for kindergarten, have them ready for school is very important. Uh, the cultural programs that we provide were more than just the Jewish Food Festival. So the film <laughs> I, series. Yeah, yeah, I'd forgotten all about food the food. Tra <laughs> food transcends everything. Um, <laughs> but our, our film series that we do, we have one coming up this fall, um, but we, we do one every year. Mm -hmm. um, and our cultural department is always looking for opportunities for us to, you know, to work with diversity um, we also provide youth-based programs um, and meeting space. You know, so if people want to have trainings, programs, uh, uh, the JCC is a great place to do that. Weddings, events at the JCC um, really is, it's kind of a place where, not to liken it to the show Cheers, but where people know your name. You mm -hmm. walk in the door, hi Stan, hi Sue, you know, right. um, the children all the way up through uh, the seniors that come in and use the, the facilities for our Tuesday club where they learn about so many different things um, to, you know, the seniors that come in and use the fitness facility or use or, or benefit from the cultural programs or come in in the spring and laugh your took us off with our comedy night. Oh, my. Uh, yeah. So that's in the spring. That's in the spring. I didn't know about that. So that's a fundraiser we do, but uh, this year we had two comedians come in, um, and you do. You laugh your took us off. You that's laugh. great. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Well, it, clearly the Jewish Community Center is a community in and of itself. It builds community. Someone who's new to the area can make a lot of connections yes. um, at the JCC. And... Equally, you help build and strengthen the larger community that you're part of. Uh, so get on the website, learn more about the Jewish Community Center here in York. Melissa Plotkin, thank you so much thank for joining you. us for this episode. Thank you.